Devin Bishop, Lamar Whitehead, Lamar Whitehead, was busted by the feds earlier today on charges that he swindled parishioners, including a retiree, out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, among the flashy pastor's alleged victims is a 56-year-old parishioner who was recovering from surgery when Whitehead offered to help him buy a new home. Now, Whitehead convinced her to withdraw nearly $90,000 from her retirement. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm not going to judge him off of his, you know, his suits or, um, how, you know, he's, you know, dresses or anything like that. But I will say this. I don't go to churches. If I attend one of your church services, um, like I have a colleague right now that wants me to join one of, you know, not join, but visit one of his church, um, services. And, um, I told him I'll come see him, you know, come visit one Sunday, um, just to see how it is, you know, um, one of, um, my favorite colleagues, I did not know that she was, well, she stopped working at my job, my day job. She stopped working there and I did not know that she go to that church. Um, again, it goes back to people need to see the God within you. And she has a beautiful spirit. So he told me she goes there as well. Um, I said, I did not know that she go there. You know, he said, yeah, she's been going there for over 40 years. I said, really? You know, so, um, and I could see the God within her and I could see the God within him as well. So, um, I said, well, maybe the spirit right in there, you know? So I did say I was going to go visit, but anyway, so with that being said, um, and it goes and she wears flashy clothes like when she first came there when i first came there she um to my deja she always told me she liked my boobs and you know like my spike boobs and you know stuff like that um you know my clothes and i'm like oh yeah i like your earrings you know da, da, da. so um just because a person may wear flashy stuff you know you get where i'm going with it you cannot judge them off of um their clothes or what they wear or um, because their clothes are tight or they just may be what they want to wear. Um, so, yeah. So, with that being said, um, but it's wrong for him to be out here scamming, getting over on people. If I go to your church and you have three or four offering plates, I will never return. And I'm only walking around once. I'm not, I don't care who's the visiting pastor. I don't care. You're getting one offer from me. Okay, that's it. I'm not going if you're talking about um you need a new car or you need, I mean, if I'm there in that moment, yeah. But knowing me, if I'm, if I'm not feeling the service, I will walk out. I will do that. I won't make a scene, but I will quietly grab my keys in my purse and I will leave. Um, I, no shame in my game. Um... If I'm not feeling the service too tough, I will leave. I will. If I feel like the preacher is taking too long on a pulpit and not getting nowhere with what he got to say, I will leave quietly. But I will walk out that door. You're not playing in my face. And, 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 and you're supposed to be on the pulpit in front of me. That's, you know, you're supposed to be the messenger from God. You're not playing in my face. You're not. Say what you have to say and leave. If I feel like the prayer taking too long, if you up there praying for 15 to 20 minutes, I will leave. You're not playing in my face. You're not. If I don't feel the prayer, my, my dudes always told me you could tell when somebody's sincere when they're praying. If you can feel it in your spirit, they're sincere. If you can't feel that S-H-I-T, they are playing in your face, okay? Um, you're not laying hands on me when I first met you, when I first meet you. You're not doing that. Deuce always told me you got to be careful who you let lay hands on you. You can keep your oil and your drawn on cross. I need to see the God within you. Miss me with the BS because it could be a person off the street and they could treat you better than the people in the church. Which going to bring me to my next story time. Not story time that I'm about to tell y'all. But with that being said, um, he wrong for scamming these people. He will have his day in, um, and before God. And, um... God would be the judge and the jury. Um, if he's doing that, which they say he is allegedly, but if he's doing that, God gonna handle him for that. And it sounds like the feds will as well. But um my next point. When I tell you 
I've had to learn some time ago. Um, these so-called preachers, well, a lot of them, don't put nothing past them. Don't say, um, he's a preacher, um, he wouldn't do, he supposed to be a man of the cloth, or whatever, uh, the, the person that fought, uh, leads the sheep, or, you know, um, I've learned, you know, they are human, just like us, um, a lot of them aren't in it for the right reasons, but a lot of them are, you know, um, you cannot, just like, you know, I've learned, you cannot judge certain Christians off of all Christians as a whole, um, or as people say, church folk, just like you cannot say, like my godmother used to always say, God rest her soul, um, she used to always tell me, it's more people in the street that's going to heaven versus in the church house. Um, she used to always tell me that because she always said it's a lot of people in churches these days that's, you know, putting up a front like they are so holier than thou. And versus the people in the street, like, um, when I know I probably say street with a K, speech impediment, but anyway, um, what was I saying? So, like, I knew a person that always said, you know, she go to church, but, um, she won't go join the church be until she was really ready to be sincere and, you know, really commit to it. Like, she'll go her now and then, you know, um, but she won't go join because she knew when she joined, she wanted to be serious about her ministry. She wanted to be, you know, really devoted to it. So, mind you, this person was my so-called cousin. But anyway, I told my godmother about it. And she said, that's somebody that's really sincere. That's somebody that really know they not really ready to be a part of the body of Christ just yet. But she's a believer. That's, my godmother always said, that's what you call a believer. You know, somebody that they know God lives. They'll go, they'll worship when they can, but they they not really ready just yet to be, you know, on the usher board, in the choir, because they know, they feel that they still got some stuff with them. But like my godmother always say, that doesn't mean you cannot join, you know, um, like my dudes always say, you got more people in the choir that fornicates more than people really think. You know, more than people really know. Uh, you got people on the usher board ushering in the, the people, the saints, as they say. But they've got some stuff with them, too, you know. So, I was always raised, God accepts you as you are. You know, um, if as you know, I grew up a hothead. And I went to church for the most part. I told y'all, I'm a damn near every Sunday. If my dudes couldn't make it, she was sending me with my aunt and them, you know. But, um, like I always say, all those beatings that I got growing up, stench cords, switches, um, curtain rods, whatever they could get their hands on, you know, I got beat with it, you know. But, obviously, as I look back, some of it had to do some good because, um, my deuce will always, did she believe in spare the rods for the child or whatever, how you say that scripture, she believed in that. Um, but obviously some of it had to do some good because as you know, high school, graduated college, graduated, um, going to grad school in the fall in my mid twenties, no kids, you know, so obviously they did something right, you know, as bad as I was fighting all the time, for the most part, that was my MO, fighting all the time, um, as bad as I was, obviously something, something, they did something right, um, but with that being said, you know, I've had to learn that a lot of these preachers, you know, I'll give you an example, so I give you an example. Um, one of my previous jobs was working um, like it was like an old folks community 
um, it was family owned, um, where, you know, like a lot of the, um, people there, you know, just, um, it wasn't like, um, it was like independent living. Like they could do for themselves. They had their own place. You know how you work in the office, kind of like, um, I wouldn't say the rent lady, but kind of like the rent lady. They'll bring me their rent, you know, stuff like that. Um, give them a receipt, you know, um, put their rent payments in, um, distribute payroll, you know. So, mind you, um, it was a staff of four. So, um, that kind of gives you an idea of how much I had to do, you know, because it won't. But so many of us working in there, so, um, it, you had a lot to do. Everybody had to pull their weight, if that makes sense. Because, mind you, even though it was a staff of four, we oversaw, um, at least, it was about 300 residents. So, that kind of gives you an idea of, um, you know, you got me rent lady slash payroll slash um maintenance request slash um board meeting coordinator i was doing a lot okay then you got the service coordinator she just a person that handles um if they have a, a, like a food ministry food bank um you know just you know stuff dealing with the one on ones with the residents along with me as well got to i had to go out on the property check things out like i had a lot to do you know um then you got that the maintenance person he of course he the person that unplugs your, your toilet um you know mate you got a leak you know stuff like that and i still had to go out with him you know let's say if you're a woman he's a guy you know they some of them the uh, woman residents they prefer another woman to be there when he's in there um then you got um then you got the old the person that like the um property manager okay so they kind of gives you an idea of what you're dealing with now that's gonna bring me to my next point right so mind you the property manager he was um he was um a retired preacher okay so now you get where i'm going with it so when i first came there mind you um on most of my jobs i'm used to being the youngest person there okay um that can be a good and a bad thing you know that could be a blessing and a curse because a lot of the times all my life i've dealt with people you know, certain things not happen. You know, certain things happen in my life, and people just not understanding why. It started from an early age. You know how I will always fight, and how people never understood how I could get to the next grade. People never understood why, and a lot of the times I've learned in life, when people don't understand your blessings, they tend to mistreat you because they feel like you're not worthy of certain blessings. Okay, so with that being said, um. So, that brings me to my next point. So, when I first came there, you'll see how all this ties into people, you know, saying preachers, you know, holding them up and on a certain pedestal. I used to be the same way, right? So, when I first came there, um, the lady that I told you about that was a service coordinator, um, I'm not dropping no names, you know, I never do nothing like that, no mess like that, anyway. Um, and I'm not telling you the name of the property either. I don't, not, not my, not my, not my, um, rhythm. Anyway, so, um, first came there, mind you, I was taking the place of a girl that had, well, a lady that had, you know, just moved on. She just felt like it just not, want nothing she wanted to do no more. So she just, you know, you know how that goes. So, um, she left, um, and they missed her very dearly. Um, she left on good terms, you know, um, she just felt it wasn't nothing she wanted to do anymore. So, um, you know, when I first came, the office was horrible. Like, and mind you, she was there for some time. She was there, um, right, right many years. Um, it was food in the corner. It was, 
you know, me being me, when I come behind somebody, um, I can't sit in dirt. Like, I can't, you know, it was old, um, what's those things called? Prunes in the corner, like, that was moldy and, you know, just little stuff. And it was just, uh, I had to clean it up. You know, I had to clean it up in there. It was just, it was, I had to move, like, I had to move some stuff around. I had, let's just, me being me, I just got a vacuum. I just, and I'm not, I'm not the, the you know, the people that, what's it, OCD? I'm not like that, but I just cannot, I can't think and feel. I cannot think straight and feel. Y'all got a lot y'all want me to do. Like, I can't, I was saying to myself, I don't see how she even sat in this, room with it nasty like this i couldn't i can't think straight like that so um so even when she came to visit at times she was like oh you done changed your stuff it smelled good you know me being me my you know my candles my scents all that like i can't i can't do it but anyway so um fast forward a little bit so you know but still at the beginning long story short i came to service coordinator um she was being a little mean to me. She was, um, and she admitted it, um, you know, and that's another thing that I've learned in life. Sometimes when you come behind somebody that's loved um, or that used to do a lot, they expect you to do the same thing. You know, um, they always used to eat lunch together. The maintenance man, he never was into it. He was he was one of those people that was stuck in his ways. If that kind of get you, kind of you kind of understand what I'm going with him. Um, they all knew how he was. He was one of them people that people always say everybody know who I am. He was one of them people. Um, but for the most part, the service coordinator and the property manager, he held her very dear to his heart. Um, he loved her to pieces, right? So remember, this is the retired preacher. So um, when I first came. Um, I'm used to people always saying, you can tell she got a little, um, hood with her. Never been in a, never grew up out the hood, never that, but, um, I have had people tell me I'm very matter of fact. Um, so when I first came, she would just, the little stuff she would just do. And you know how you could tell when somebody trying to be funny and, say a lot of little slick stuff and you know and just little stuff like that so um and I couldn't I couldn't understand why because I was just coming and you know so um as time went on I would notice that the property manager he would start being mean to me you know and you know just the little stuff and um I'll give you an example right so um mind you the service coordinator she was on a walker right so um what's a good example it's just, it's just a little stuff um so i'm trying to think of an example so when i wouldn't come eat lunch with them that was a problem because they would always bring up the old lady like um she won't old she was she i think she had me beat by like six or seven years she was a little older than me but she wasn't old so um i think she was like in her early 30s so they will always bring up how she would eat lunch with them. So you know that's gonna be a problem with the last person that always did it. Um, the they did it all the time. You the person that feel like you wanna go out and eat. You know, um, you know, just the little stuff like that. And I've learned that like sometimes that. Like my dudes, I couldn't understand it, but my dudes had to break it down to me. They probably felt that you didn't like them like that. Or they probably felt, and it wasn't that. I'll come sit down and eat with y'all maybe once a week. But I'm not the type of person that like to eat in front of people. I'm one of those people. I told y'all I'm the only child. I'm used to doing things my way, you know, by myself. I'm not used to always being around people. For me, that's kind of irritating. You know, um, or they used to do, so that was one thing they, you know, c caused a little friction because, well, so-and-so used to come eat with us all the time. Why does we, ha why do we have to eat together all the time? You know, um, I may have errands I need to run or, you know, stuff like that. So another thing, 
um, that used to cause a little friction. So she used to be in his ear about that. That's one thing. Um, so another thing she used to be in his ear about, um, I'm just trying to give you a little example. Um, oh, and he has made when that, when the, the girl had came to the, um, you know, the office to visit sometime, um, he asked her, he said, um, he said, uh, what did he say that time when he said, um, Oh, when he asked her, he said, what you doing this weekend? And she said, I'm going with my friends, like, you know, uh, mountain climbing or something. And then we're going to go get some exercise. And he said, exercise. He said, good, take her with you. She needs some. So talking about me, you know, so that was a fat joke, you know, which I've dealt with fat jokes before. But, you know, the little petty stuff, you know, you a retired preacher. Um... So, little stuff, so more of the story, the little stuff that he was saying, you know, um, I'll tell y'all this like I tell my dudes. I have been through a lot in my life, but out of all my jobs, I have never cried as much as I've had to cry when I worked around him. Because he used to pick. He used to pick a lot. Um, And I'm not even telling y'all the real bad jokes. He would say, um... He was just, he used to pick, like, real bad. Um, I had, like, for example, the little stuff he would do, like, I had a heating pad. I love my heating pad for my back. So, one time, I guess my heating pad was in his way. He picked up my heating pad and threw it. I lied to you not. And I said to him, I said, was that nice? And he, um, he picked it up. He picked it up after that. He picked it up and just threw it, like literally just threw it. Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. And just the little stuff he would do, just, um, he used to get into it with the residents. And mind you, I never got into it with none of the residents. Um, I was raised by old people, so I know how old people are. So the residents in the community, they never really, I always say, you know how to talk to them. You know how to treat them. Um, they, they know how to talk to you bad. You know, I was the person that they would come to if they didn't want to communicate with him. They would come to me. Hey, can you tell Mr. Da, 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 I need da, 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 da. Um, even the maintenance man, I just told y'all how he was, you know, I didn't even tell y'all the mean, the real mean jokes he used to say. Um, he, he used to be very hateful. So, Okay, so bringing me to my next point, right? So as time went on, me and the service coordinator got a little close, right? So that gave her time. You know, I think she felt kind of bad with some of the things that he was doing, say, because he would do it out in the public. Like one particular time, um, mind you, just a, just a retired preacher, one particular time, um, when things were getting really bad, the way he used to treat me, which I found out why he used to treat me that way, but I couldn't understand why. And when one particular time he, um, caught himself trying to be funny. So mind you, I came to the door. I'm like, what? So he repeated himself, mind you him and, he was in the office with the service coordinator. So I said, what? So he said something. And mind you, I'm standing like it's both of them in the room and I'm standing outside the room. When I tell y'all, he slammed the door right in my face. Like literally looked me in the eye and slammed the door right in my face. And mind you, she had one of those doors where you ever see them doors like say you in the, um, going to like the um, it's like a little window so you can see in her office. So it's a door that was just like a little window right there. So I, as I walked through, like I, I ended up getting my stuff. This is when, after this day, this is when we got close. This is when we got close. So I ended up getting my stuff and I just looked in the door and I looked at her and she did one of those faces like she felt bad. She felt really bad. So this was a Thursday, right? So I never forget it. So that Friday... Um, she started talking to me. So 
when and he was one of them bosses that um as time got bad he would go get everybody food and then he wouldn't get me none and then little petty stuff like that but at this particular time i didn't care I didn't care because um, I was making decent money there. And I, again, I always told y'all I always kept more than one source of income. I had a night job as well. Um, so I was making pretty good money. So I didn't care about nobody giving me no little $10, $12 meal. Man, I didn't care about that. So, um, but point being... A lot of the times, as time went on, when he would go get them food, call himself being funny, that's when me and her would talk, how he was, right? So, and mind you, like I told you, I'm not telling y'all the real deep stuff, the little mean jokes. Because sometimes I even talk, bring it up to my dudes, and she's like, oh, don't remind me of him. Because he, he, he would be very hurtful. The little stuff that, you know, he would say. So, it just would blow our minds. So... Um, we were talking, I told y'all this particular Friday, this is when we got close after he slammed the door in my face, right? So, one, this particular Friday, she said, hey, she came in my office, she said, hey, I said, what's up, I said, oh, I'm gonna say her name. So, she said, um, she said, I want to apologize. And I said, um, I said myself, I knew, I knew, I knew it, I knew I won't tripping, I knew it. She said, I want to apologize. She said, um, I'm the reason why he is that way towards you. And I said, really? You know, because I couldn't understand. I didn't connect the dots. I knew she didn't care much for me at first, you know. And she said, um, well, you know, we just got to talking. And she said, I was in his ear about you, how I felt you weren't the right person for the position, you know. You didn't remind me of so-and-so. We wanted somebody similar to her. And because I told y'all, a lot of the stuff she would do, I wasn't willing to do. Um, Like, for example, the end of the work day, um, I told y'all she was on the walker. So a lot of the time, if she was working late, she wanted me to stay like 30 minutes with her that are not paid. And that I'm not getting paid to do this was before we talked. So of course that's rubbed her the wrong way. And mind you, at this particular time, they did not know I had two jobs. You know, I never tell my other job about my other job. You know. So, you know, a lot of the time I had to be home at night because or the time is, is of an essence to me because I have to get some sleep. I have to get some sleep because I got to go to my night job. So I can't stay with you 30 minutes and I'm not getting paid for it. I have to go. So, of course, if nobody is there to with her, she got to figure out how she going to roll her walker out by herself. She got, and that was a big thing for her. Um, if he gone and the other man gone, a lot of the time she be there by herself. So she got to figure out how she going to get out this door by herself, all that. But I'm sorry, I hate to say this, but I cannot do, I cannot, I, that's not my problem. I didn't tell her that though, but I got to figure out how I'm about to go home and get like two or three hours of sleep because I got to go to work tonight. And then I still got to, when I get off tomorrow morning, because again, that shift is going to roll until tomorrow morning. I don't have time to sleep because I got to be back here. You see what I'm saying? So, ooh, skip them. Y'all will be at home sleep. I got stuff I got to do. And mind you, around this particular time, I was still in college. So a lot of times I had to go to classes. I had to study. I didn't really have time to sit and just, you know, and a lot of times she wanted people, she got to stop, get on the phone. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. I got to go, you know. So um, as we got a little closer, I'm still not going to tell you my business. I may tell you what I, you know certain things but i'm not gonna let you know everything because at this point i already know you're a snake i mean i appreciate you acknowledging what you did but in my mind i'm like mm -hmm, i already knew that but anyway i knew that you was mistreating me i did not know that's the reason why he was the way that he was so with that being said some time went on we got a little closer right and they gave her time to get to know me for me. So a lot of the times when he would do little hurtful stuff. And you know the little stuff he. Like I'm telling you. He would say some hurtful stuff. Really hurtful. And. um, I'm not even. I'm just. 
I'm just on the, the the top of the surface with some of the things he he done talked about my weight. Um, he done, which that don't bother me, but I remember one particular time and he would pick real bad, and even she said it. Like one particular time, I'm sitting in my um, I'm sitting in his office doing my you know my um stuff because um. I got to get the files to go, you know, put them away and, you know, people filing, sir, the residents filing stuff. And one particular time, he just, I'm just standing there. He just made a remark out of nowhere. Like, that's why I, and he said, um, this is when he said, uh, you know, you remind me of my cousin so-and-so you shape just like her. And I didn't mean not knowing who his cousin is, you know, but I told you his family owned, so the service coordinator, she was very close to their family. So she said, um, so I told her, you know, again, when he went out to get their food, I told her, you know, what he had said. And she said, um, now why would he say that? See, that, he is so childish at times, you know, at times. So she, and I told her, she said, well, what's the cousin? I imagine she'd have been around him. He know who she's talking about. Um, she know who he's talking about. And I told her the person. Now he said, now he know that lady shaped like Respucia. Why would he say that? That's not nice. Come on now. So, and she said, you know, you're not even nowhere near big as that lady. Come on now. And then so she shaked her head and she apologized again. She said, I'm sorry. You know, so, um. My dudes, so more of the story, my dudes had to, I told her, before I told my dudes, I told her, I said to the service coordinator, right? I'm trying not to slip and say her name. I said, um, he supposed to be a, a retired preacher. Why is he like this? Why is he, you know, why is he like this, you know? And she said to me, she said, um, don't you know preachers? can be some of the worst people sometimes just because he i said but he's supposed to be you know preacher's supposed to be you know a person from god you know this is when i used to hold people up at the pedestal with preachers and she said that don't mean nothing you know sometimes they could be worse than the people out here in the world you know so as time went on we got to talking more and more because, you know, a lot of the time he would go get food and, you know, go get their food and, you know, try to be funny. And I would go get my own food. I didn't care about none of that. And I got to the point, I told you, I won't hurt him for no money. Um, I got to the point where I would, they go eat um, McDonald's, for example. I would go get me some Ruby Tuesday. I would go get me some um, Smoky Bones or, you know, just y'all go get Wendy's. I'm in here eating ribs. Or... Y'all in there eating nuggets. I'm in here eating shrimp and uh, scallops. I that's what my dudes would tell me to do. She's like, go go one up, since you know and stuff like that. So the service coordinator by us getting close out of some time for some time, she got to the point where she'd be like, you can have some of mine, you know, when he would do little stuff and that would piss him off because. And then my dudes, I couldn't, I was talking to my dudes about it. You know, it's time when I was like, well, why would she do that? She said because now. You you kind of on her soft spot, so she, it hurts her to see him do you like that, you know. And that would piss him off because he would tell her, "Don't give her none," and stuff like that. You know the little childish stuff. She's like, "No, I'm gonna give her some of mine," and stuff like that. So then you know me being me, well, you want a piece of my rib? Yeah, I want a piece of your rib. Give me a piece of your rib, you know. So little stuff, and that would piss him off. I bought that. Don't give her none, you know, and stuff like that. And she's like, "Well, no, she can have, you know, stuff like that." So, um, we had both kids to the conclusion that he was very childish, right? So, you know, stuff like that. So, um, as time went on, we got to talking more. And it seemed like as time went on, we would start talking, not about him and his face. When he would leave, we would. But we, it seemed like it would piss him off when we would talk, you know. So, she told me, and one thing my dude said, well, one thing about it, she told you up front, she didn't hide it, you know. She told me up front, she said when she first met me, she didn't care much for me. And I asked her, I said, why? And But I'm used to that. I'm used to people doing that at first. And then when they get to know me, they, you know, they, they get attached. So, um, 
as time went on, she got to know me and she said, I'm sorry. You know, she kept saying it all the time, I'm sorry. And I kept asking my dudes, why she keeps saying it over and over again? She said, because she feel real bad, right? So, as time went on, she, you know, him being mean, being mean-spirited about it. Um, She would tell me, she said, first when I met you, I thought you were rough around the edges. And I said, why? And she's, you know, the stuff she would tell me and she would, um... She said, I had to get to know you. You have a, um, it's like you have a shell on you. And I couldn't understand what shell that she was talking about. Like, you don't want to come eat with us. You didn't want to come stay with us. Like, when we would stay late, you didn't want to come to none of the work cookouts. It just came across as, you know, standoffish. And then me being me, I've heard that word a lot in my life. I'm very, I come across very standoffish. Um, we weren't used to people, you know, not coming to none of the events, you know. Um, and my response to all these things were, y'all not paying me to do it. Y'all not paying me to do it. Y'all not paying me to do it. So, I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing nothing. You know, what so-and-so used to do. So-and-so, well, I'm not her. I'm me. So-and-so used to work one job, like y'all said. I, You know, I was alluding to, I have other stuff on my plate, you know. So, um... I don't do nothing for free. That's just me. Um, if you are, if I get close to you and you become dear to my heart, that's a different story. But I'm not doing nothing for free. When I just met you, no. Anyway, so time went on. Um, I told y'all we got very close. Um, we actually exchanged numbers. You know, they kind of give you an idea of how close we got, right? So long story short, things blew up. As you can see where I'm alluding to. Um, and I ended up telling him about himself real bad. And I was actually surprised. Um, she stood her ground with how she felt with him as well. Um, and he looked like he wanted to cry. When I was telling him how I felt. You know how you could tell somebody ain't paying you no mind. But when... She actually was standing there, you know, and especially when I said, and I'm not the only one that feels this way, I expected her to say, not me, not me, not people do. She actually, she didn't, you know, I was surprised with her. I said, oh, look at you, you know, because you know how some people say it to you, but don't want to say it to that person. Um, She actually stood her ground I said, and my dudes were laughing, my dudes said, because she knew what he was doing was wrong, you know. So, um, I'm bleeping out a lot of the story, but I think y'all get where I'm alluding to. Um, and we actually kept in contact. Um, we, I, you know, she knew when I graduated college, she knew about the grad school. Um, and she always, to this day, she always apologized. She always, and she has admitted to some things. And, um, she actually told me to my face that she told them when they hired me, they actually done this was the hurtful part. I did not know she had did that. Um, but she told me to my face, and my dude said, Lee, she told you. She told me to my face that she told these people. Mind you, this company was family owned, so they didn't have like an HR department. They had a, a board members. Like, you know, like I told you, I was also the person doing the board member meetings and all that other stuff. They were family owned, so you already know. How that stuff go when it's family owned. A lot of stuff get pushed under the rug. It's they family. You know, da da da. So, mind you, um, these supposed to all be church folks. He supposed to be a retired preacher. The cousin that is the head of the board, he supposed to be um, a deacon. You know, they kind of give you an idea. These all supposed to be church folks, right? So, um... The other, the other cousins, all of them cousins on the board. You might as well say all of them cousins and aunts and uncles. They, they, and we ain't talking about by marriage. Like we talking these all first and second cousins, real cousins. So, um, one of them sister and brother. So anyway, so, um, that which brings me to my next point as well. Um, even as I was telling her, I said, you know, I'm gonna tell them how he was and that's how i found out they was all family 
Because she told me straight up, she said, I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to work. I said, what you mean it ain't going to work? She said, because they all family. I said, what? I said, and me being me, like I told her, had I known this was a family-owned community, I would have never, I would have never came, I would have never accepted the job because I don't like working in environments like that because once you piss one off, you might as well say you're going to piss all of them off. And she said, exactly. So, she said, you better off just leaving. Um, And she told me, why you think I keep my mouth shut with a lot of stuff because I already know this day family stuff. I said, so you're not in the party family? She said, no. She said, I already know how they are. They very close knit. They the type of family that, you know, even when you wrong, you still right. So you that kind of gives you an idea of the type of people I was dealing with. So um she told me well, you know, again, once he was gone, he was going to get them breakfast or something. We was talking and he was gone for some time because he had an appointment after that. So that really gave us time to talk, you know, when this particular day. And she told me, Oh, she told me in this conversation, she told me when I first came, this was the hurtful part. I had to step away from the conversation. Um, and she didn't feel bad. She said, at least I told you what I said. She, she told me, she said, I, she told the people that she felt they lowered the bar when they hired me. And I had to, I had to get up from the table at that point because that was hurtful. I, and I came back. You know, she told me, she called me, she said, look, the reason why I told them I did not know you then, I had to get to know you. Um, I told you the reasons why I felt that way. Um, I had to get to know you. You know, at least I'm telling you now, you know, now that I know you, I know you're not that way, you know. And even it got to the point where he would say little stuff and she would actually, you know, take up for me. You know, um, she would do it like in a modest way, but I think he started to know, you know, and he would get pissed off. Um, like one particular situation, um, they were ordering food and they got to the point where she was like, uh-uh, let's, um, let's get her something. Let's not do that. Come on now. Let's not. Well, no, we ain't getting that on my dime. I ain't getting her this, that, and the third. So, um, I told her, I said, no, you know. When he was going to say, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you are. You're going to come sit and eat with us. You know, da-da-da, right? So, one particular time, you know, we got the food and, you know, da-da-da. So, I told her, she told me, do it for me, right? So, he I, like he was just so uncomfortable with me sitting at this table, right? So, he said he won't going to get, mind you, he said he won't going to get the food if I got to eat, right? So, she said, well, I get it. I'm going to get it, right? So he that's how child mind you, this man is seventy five. No, he was seventy nine. He was seventy nine because he turned eighty last year. So this year he'd be eighty one. So you know that gives you an idea of how he was. But just because he eighty, seventy nine at the time, um, he could move. He could move. He was not one of those people that old can't move he was he took very, very good care of himself all he ate was fruits and nuts and you know stuff like that um he could move he was very strong for his age so um so long story short we was at the table one time mate mind you i have a speech impediment which i told him about my last day when i was you know telling him about himself i didn't curse at him or nothing like that but i told him about himself in words and, you know, he would mock me sometimes the way I would pronounce my words, right? And um, one particular time we was talking and I said street and he was street, street, street. Like street don't have a K and, you know, just little stuff like that. And um, when I said, um, I forgot I said it was, um, I said it was drizzling outside. He said it's it's, I know I said, um, it's sprinkling outside. He said, oh, it's precipitate. Uh, it's drizzling. You mean, you know, just little petty stuff, you know. So, um, he used to mock me a lot of the times about the way I would pronounce my words. And my last day in the midst of me telling him how I felt, I told him, I said, and by the way, while you mocking me the way I talk, I have a speech impediment. I've had it since I was a little girl. And I could hear her say, oh, my God, I did not know that. I did not know that. 
I don't, I don't never want to be that person that, you know, make fun of somebody because of, you know, something they can't help. So, mind you, I was talking to him, but I was really directing it to him. But when I thought about it, my dude said, mind you, did you hear the part where she said, I'm sorry about that as well? Because my dudes had brought it to my attention. I didn't even catch that. That meant that she used to talk about it too. So I said myself then, I said, oh my goodness, she didn't even tell me that too. So more of the story, um, in a nutshell, church folks can be a certain way as well. Um, don't ever think that church folks, I used to be that way until I started working there. And you know, just meeting church people in life and how they do. Um, mind you, like I told you, I didn't even tell y'all the real heavy stuff that he used to do, um, and say, and the little things that really like used to make me cry. Some of the stuff that he used to say, um, were just out of this world. Um, like one particular time, um, I told him I may have to take off a day. Because my dudes, I thought at the time she was going to have surgery, which she didn't. And he said, when I told him that, he said, I said, you know, because if my dudes had surgery, you know, I was saying something. And his response to my dudes being sick, not, now I'm not talking about the um, surgery part. I'm talking about the sick part. He cut me off and said, so what? Why do I care? Why, why do like something along those lines? And I got him back for that when I when I left. And I said, and by the way, did you not think I was going to tag you for that remark? And like I told him, I said, you got some nerd trying to say some slick about somebody family member. And like, I, and mind you, his daughter is grown, so miss me with the talk about people's kids part and stuff like that. I said, do you not know that's my mama? You know, so what makes you think? So I said, and by the way, um, your daughter looked like a man. And... <laughs> Which was wrong. Miss me with the, that that lady that mind you, he's seventy nine. That lady is in her fifties. So miss me with the talking about somebody child part. You talk you said some slip about my mama's so office, say some slip about your daughter. Miss me with the BS. Miss me with the BS and mind you, um miss me with the BS. Okay, you said something I couldn't tell him then because I was still working there, but I knew I was on my way out the door anyway. So I that was my time to get my rocks off. Yes, I did. And like I told him, I said and I brought up that time when he got a picture of one of his daughters up there. Mind you, his one of his daughters is a famous actor. I'm not going to tell you what actress. They don't look nothing alike. You can tell they come from two separate mamas, okay, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not going to tell you who one of his daughters is. She's she, I, I, I ain't going to tell you who she is, but let's just say she played on, um, she was one of the supporting cast on Power. And I'll just leave it there. Um, you you wouldn't guess because I didn't know I didn't know who she was until um I Googled her when he told me her name. So and another thing, I'm gonna give you a little bit more about his character. The daughter that I'm talking about that looked like a dude. He don't know that I know, but the service coordinator told me she's a dyke, right? He don't know that I know this. So Mind you, I'm going to give you a little bit more about his character. He's the type that he'll tell you all about the daughter that's married to a man that plays in all these roles that has a net worth of over $2 million. But he will not tell you nothing about, and I'm not going to tell you what she do for a living. Because if I tell you, she's Google, she's, you could Google her as well. With her job. She has a regular job. But it's a big time job. So like I was talking to the service coordinator about. Why. Okay she gay. But she has a good. A damn good job. Um, How can I say this. Let's just say. um, She works as. Y'all know like. People that stay on housing redevelopment. And stuff like that. She's not the person that's like a, she followed, she followed, she followed in her father's footsteps as far as housing, right? She works as a director. I'm not talking about just over a, a specific property. I know I slaughtered that word, but anyway, 
she works over all the properties in all the cities for this particular state okay she she's one of the she's the highest of all the properties not just one particular property she has a damn good job okay we talking about we talking about a job we talking about a career so anyway so that gives you an idea of he'll tell you all about this daughter that is an actor that's married to a man but he won't tell you nothing more much about this daughter because she's married to a woman and they're with her partner and stuff like that so it's like he's embarrassed of her because you know you know it's like he, you know and then the thing is He has one in a little in a little way, but he'll tell you all about. So me being me, I said, "Oh yeah, I didn't know you had two kids." You know, I brought it up. You see, that's how I found. That's how he knew that I knew he, and he was kind of pissed off that I knew about the other one. You know, so and I said that you know I told him what I got into. I said, you know, I told him I said you really thought I won't tag you back for what you said that day, but uh, -uh. but anyway. So, um, I know I went all over the place with this story, but anyway, um, so in a nutshell, um, cause I remember one particular day he got a picture of his daughter when she was younger, you know, before she started really discovering her identity, if you know what I mean. And the service coordinator said, Hey, she's called his name. She said, who's that man right there? And, um, he said, what man? And he said, right, and she said, right there. And me trying to not laugh, you know. And she was so serious. She was so serious. He said, what man? Ain't no man in here. What you talking about? She said, that picture right there, right there. She was pointing to it. And he said, what, this? And she said, yeah. She said, this. He said, this is my daughter. I wanted to holler so bad. But I had to hold it. And I had to act like I had to use the bathroom. I, it was so funny to me. And I was so happy that she did that because, you know, that had really pissed him off. And he was so, ugh. But anyway, um, so y'all get where I'm going with it. Church people are human. You know, they have their ways just like anybody else. Um, Like I told y'all, me and the service coordinator grew to be very close. My dudes didn't want me to get close to her too bad because... She, my dudes felt that she was still wrong for what she did. Even though she admitted to it, she told me, don't ever forget how. My dudes always told me, you forgive, but you never forget. You ought to never forget how people did you in the beginning. And I, I hope, she's always told me that since I was a little girl. I've always dealt with that all my life. People, you know, do little stuff. And once they get to know me, they love me to pieces. I'm, I'm used to that. Um, She has reached out a couple of times. Eh. I've gotten to the point where I start responding. I think she in the court to hint. She don't respond as much as she... She don't reach out as much as she used to. Um, of course, he stuck to his, his pow pow with me. And um, that's fine. Um, when I told my dudes how he was about to cry, um, she said, um, he won't buy the cry because of you. He was about to cry because he was hurt that she did what she did so as i was getting my stuff and i was leaving and like i told him i said by the way i quit i can't do it with y'all i just can't and um, she said well it's not me i said well it was you in the beginning it was you in the beginning and like i told him i said it's only four of us here it shouldn't have been that way it shouldn't have been that way um and i could tell even with the board members how they were taught to me and and like she said they i told you they found me you already know how that go when they family. You already know. So, um, after that experience, I told myself I never, before I, you know, when I find out, find out if the company is family owned, before I accept the job, I need to know more about this company. I need to know who these people are, how they are. So, I got to the point where whenever I accept the job, because I know what I bring to the table as far as my experience, my education, I don't have to take the bottom barrel jobs. Um, and I'm not going to say that was a bottom barrel job. They paid all right. They paid pretty well. I chose to get another job. Um, me being me, I don't trust shit. I always believe you need more money coming in as much as possible as you can at that particular time attain. Okay, 
So anyway, with that being said, um, y'all get where I'm going with it. Um, I just wanted to give y'all this story time so that y'all know, y'all have an idea, you know, give you a little example of how sometimes church people can be. Don't think I told you I used to be the type a pastor, pastor, hey, pastor, like, um, my former pastor, I, when I was a little girl, I, one time when I shaked his hand, I kissed the, his hand because, you know, I was under the impression which my grandfather had spanked me about. Said, First of all, you don't kiss no man hand. You know, he always taught me you be careful how you, you know, because depending on a man, he could get the wrong idea. You know, he could take advantage. I actually got a, a spanking for that. Um, when I used to see church people, I used to, uh, pastor. Oh, uh, you know, oh my goodness, it's a pastor, it's a pastor, you know, I used to do that, you know, I used to be, I told y'all, I was raised in church, you know, um, I used to be happy to go get his water bottle, hey, I'm gonna go get your water bottle, I'm gonna go, you know, but I had to realize as I got older, these are human people, just like you and I, you know, you don't do that, you don't, you know, they, you don't do that, you know, um, I used to call the first lady of the church, uh, your, your highness, you know, your first lady. She's the first lady, you know, you know, but I had to learn. These are people just like you and I. They are regular people, you know. Um, so with that being said, um, he's human. This guy is human in the story. He's human. Um, yeah, he got over on the church or. Yeah, he was scamming, out here scamming, going back to the story at hand, setting aside my story time. You know, um, looking at this guy, um, looking at this guy, you can see that, I don't know about nobody else, but he screams scam artist. Nothing about him screams, um, down to earth, um man of the cloth, a little humble, um, the suits, the jewelry that he wears in other pictures, just to me, it's not somebody that I want to really hear talk about Jesus. Now, I hate to be like, again, going back to the service coordinator in my story time, I hate to be that type of person that would just look at somebody and just say, for example, um, my first day, I didn't have on a suit. Going back to my story time, right? I didn't have on a suit on my first day. So she dealt with something else that she was in their ear about. Why she not wearing a suit on her first day? Uh, excuse me. I wore a suit to my interview. I had on just a nice blouse and some trousers and some heels. You know, um, that's a street girl attire. If you tell me, me having on a blouse that's ruffles. Google what a ruffles blouse is. With some pearls, some trousers, and some heels that weren't six inch, they were wedges. Okay, so where are you getting street girl from that? A lot of girls don't even want to wear ruffles because they think it's old timey. I've heard a lot of girls say that. It's it's old timey and pearls. Nothing about that is a street girl material. Street girl material would be me coming in here in a cat suit or some shorts. Or something like that. That's street girl stuff. Okay. That's street girl attire. So, again, I, I hate to be that person that judges somebody off of that. I wear suits sometimes. I like that look. on Y'all wanted to tell us so bad. Go to hell. Okay. I wear what I want to wear. I'm fully covered. You can't see my arms. You can't see my chest. You can't see anything. Those, that, those trousers are too tight. This, that, and the third. Da, 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 da. You, nothing about that is too tight. Okay. Because I don't want to wear something too tight. Because I don't know if I'm going to have to go out on the property. I don't know what the resonance may need. So anyway, I'm not going to say because of his suit, he's not a man of the cloth. I'm not going to say that. But to me, um, I think it's more appropriate to have him on a tie. Um, you know, something like that. But I'm not going to say he's automatically not a man of the cloth because he wears expensive jewelry and, you know, flashy suits and stuff like that because i've had people pass judgment on me as well with certain things so i cannot say that um but with that being said i'm not gonna say church is overrated but i'm not gonna say it isn't as well i'm not gonna say that you know i think it's all it all depends on the person and how you know they are serious about their ministry 
if that makes sense. It depends on how, you know, serious they take their ministry. How um, you treat people. How you act towards people. How you, you know, communicate with people. You know, I need to look at you and see God within you. So, in a nutshell, um, even for myself, I had to learn. For the people out there that say, all church people are a particular way. That's not true. And for the people out there like how I used to be that feel all church people need to be put on a pedestal. Don't do that because they don't. They are human just like you and I. And that's it.